Hyvron, this lesson is on the condition known as hand, foot, and mouth disease. Hand, foot, and mouth disease is an infectious disease that causes a rash on the hands, feet, and mouth. This is why we call it hand, foot, and mouth disease. Now, hand, foot, and mouth disease is a viral infection, and it's most commonly caused by the virus known as Coxsackie virus A type 16 or CVA 16. And CVA 16 is a positive sense single-stranded RNA virus. Although most cases of hand, foot, and mouth disease are caused by Coxsackie virus A type 16, there are other viruses that can cause this condition as well, and these include Coxsackie viruses A5, A7, A9, A10, B2, and B5 strains, along with Enterovirus 71 or EV71. Enterovirus 71 or EV71 is an important virus to point out because this can cause a more severe illness, and we're going to talk about some of the complications and severe symptoms that this particular virus can cause in hand, foot, and mouth disease. And Enterovirus 71 seems to be more common in Asian countries. And it's also important to note that patients can also be infected with multiple of these viruses at the same time. Now, hand, foot, and mouth disease occurs worldwide. It has a worldwide distribution. And it affects most commonly children, and especially very young children under the age of 5 to 10. But having said that, this condition can infect adults as well. And because children are the most commonly affected group of individuals that get this condition, where we're going to see a lot of cases of hand, foot, and mouth disease are going to be in daycares, summer camps, and within families. There's going to be a lot of what we call horizontal transmission, transmission between children to children. But as I mentioned before, in more rare cases, children can pass this condition on to their parents as well. And we can see increased cases of hand, foot, and mouth disease at particular times of year, especially in the late summer and early fall or early autumn. So we can see peak in case numbers in these particular times of year. And in some parts of the world, we can also see a cyclical pattern occurring over multiple years where we see outbreaks occurring every three to four years, for instance. So this is also something to make note of as well. So how do individuals transmit and become infected with this condition? So the viruses that cause hand, foot, and mouth disease are going to be transmitted by bodily fluids. So it's going to occur via contact with bodily fluids, either from oral secretions or nasal secretions or from fecal material. And we can also see it from respiratory droplets that become aerosolized. And all of this can occur via direct or indirect mechanisms. So direct meaning that if one child is infected, they can directly transmit the virus to another child so they could be closer to that child and there could be respiratory droplets or oral secretions that the other child ingests or gets in contact with their respiratory or oral mucosa and get infected directly from the other infected child or it could be indirect meaning that there's an infected child that touches objects in the environment, could be furniture, could be toys, and then they leave the environment and another child comes into that environment, touches those same furniture or same toys that contain the virus, and then they become infected that way. That could also be a way that this virus can transmit, so both direct and indirect. So when an individual does come into contact with secretions that contain the virus, they either have that virus contact their respiratory mucosa, their oral mucosa, and get infected that way, or they indirectly or accidentally ingest the virus and it enters into their gastrointestinal system. Those are the two ways that virus can get into the body. And once it gets in, it starts to multiply and replicate and enter into surrounding lymphatic tissue. It can enter into surrounding lymphatic tissue in the throat or respiratory system, or can enter into the surrounding lymphatic tissue in the gastrointestinal system as well. And that often takes around 24 hours for it to do that. And as I mentioned before, a fecal oral route of transmission is an important one, especially in children. And the virus can be shed from respiratory secretions or oral secretions or through the stool, and this can last for weeks. So we can often see this being very infectious in patients, especially young children. And what's important to note here is that when an individual becomes infected with this virus, it takes about three to five days before a patient starts to see symptoms. That is the incubation period. 
Now let's talk about the clinical features of hand, foot, and mouth disease. There is a small or brief prodrome that can occur in this condition. A prodrome is the signs and symptoms that occur before the hallmark findings of the condition. And the hallmark findings in hand, foot, and mouth disease are going to be that rash that affects the hands, the feet, and the mouth. So there's going to be certain signs and symptoms that occur before the onset of that rash. These are going to include the following, a fever, so a fever that's going to be anywhere from 38 to 39 degrees Celsius. So it's going to be a low grade fever that occurs for about 24 to 48 hours. Patients can also have a sore mouth or sore throat. They can also have reduced appetite. They can have malaise. They can feel generally unwell. Some patients can have abdominal pain and some can have nausea and vomiting. And some of the gastrointestinal findings are going to be more likely to occur in cases where the patient's infected with enterovirus 71. So again, these are the prodromal signs and symptoms, and they occur for a roughly 12 to 36 hours prior to the onset of the rash. So after that 12 to 36 hour prodrome, we start to see an eruption of a vesicular rash. So the rash can look something like this. There can be blister-like sores on the hands, the feet, and the mouth. We can see particularly in the mouth, and especially the posterior mouth. So again, this occurs one to two days after the fever. So it's important to think about fever, then rash. So hand, foot, and mouth disease, we're going to see a fever, then a rash. It's going to occur as vesicles and pustules on an erythematous base. So vesicles are going to be fluid-filled raised skin lesions. Pustules are pus-filled skin lesions. And erythematous means that the skin is reddened. So we can see the rash occurring inside the mouth. So we can see it on the tongue, buccal mucosa, and hard palate. Buccal mucosa is going to be on the insides of the cheeks, and on the hard palate, it's going to be on the upper or the top of the mouth, inside the mouth. So we're going to see the rash occur first inside the mouth, and then it's going to start to occur on other parts of the body later, like the hands and the feet. The hand and foot rash lasts on average five to 10 days. And some other parts of the body that can be affected with this rash include not only the mouth, hands, and feet, but we can also see it in the buttocks and the genitalia as well. So the rash often is going to start out as a macular-like rash, macular meaning that it starts out more as a flat lesion, and then that lesion is going to start to raise and become fluid-filled, and fluid-filled raised skin lesions are known as vesicles. And then in some cases, the vesicles can become eroded and we can see erosions on an erythematous halo. That's going to be the terms that are used for this particular type of rash, especially inside the mouth. So this is the stages of this particular type of rash. And some other images of the rash include this image here around the mouth. We can see it on the hands like so, and we can also see it on the feet as well. And it's also important to note that this rash is not itchy or painful. So the majority of cases of hand, foot, and mouth disease are going to have those signs and symptoms we talked about before, those prodromal findings, and also that rash, and oftentimes that's going to be it. But in some cases, there can be more severe signs and symptoms and complications that can occur. And these include aseptic meningitis, encephalitis, and encephalomyelitis, so an inflammation of the brain, and inflammation of the brain and spinal cord, acute cerebellar ataxia, acute transverse myelitis, Guillain-Barre syndrome in some cases, opsomyoclonus syndrome, and benign intracranial hypertension. All of these complications are more likely to occur from infection with enterovirus 71. So this is going to be the virus that causes a more severe clinical presentation. So it's important to recognize this virus. How do clinicians diagnose and treat hand, foot, and mouth disease? So oftentimes it's going to be a clinical diagnosis. By history and physical examination, and by seeing whether or not there are multiple cases of this in the community, this can be enough to make the diagnosis of hand, foot, and mouth disease. But laboratory investigations can be used in some cases. So this includes viral isolation using two swabs, PCR, polymerase chain reaction. This can be helpful in distinguishing between intravirus 71 and other viruses that may be causing hand, foot, and mouth disease. And serologic testing in some cases looking for antibodies. So treatment of this condition is going to be often supportive. It's going to be a self-limiting disease in most cases, and it often resolves on its own within seven to 10 days. And the supportive treatment is often going to be with fluids, so giving the patient lots of fluids. There are some other factors that should be implemented as well, and these include avoidance of certain foods that may irritate the lesions. So because there are so many lesions within the mouth, it can be very difficult for patients to eat certain foods. So avoidance of very hard foods, very spicy foods, or 
other irritating foods is going to be important as well. So often a patient will have very soft pureed foods while they have those lesions in the mouth. Antipyretics are going to be important, so that can help reduce the fever. Pain relief in some cases, so this can be with acetaminophen, ibuprofen, and mouthwashes. Certain mouthwashes can be used to help with those painful lesions in the mouth. And in some cases, if the case or the condition is more severe, IVIG therapy has been used in some cases, and certain antiviral medications have been used to treat enterovirus 71 because of its severity. So I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.